What's up guys, Michal here and here I am with the video that I've promised you all uh, the restoration and repair of a total Nightmare 286 system that I've picked up I bought it because that was again in my favorite case and again with my favorite motherboard and 286 CPU and it had a SIM slot and it's completely broken like everything the case is broken motherboard is broken ram in this motherboard board turned out to be broken like literally everything so the nightmare so on base of this computer i would like to show you how i troubleshoot that kind of retro system because it is a little bit different than troubleshooting 5170 the original uh, ibm at system i will show you all the tricks I will use just a standard voltage multimeter, no oscilloscope, no nothing. Uh, a little bit of schematics for, for that board and few tricks that you can pull up from your sleeve even if you are not an electrical engineer, even if that's gonna be the first system you will be uh, rebuilding from the scratch. As I said, everything is broken so I have nothing to nothing to lose i paid for this computers like 30 bucks and it's in my favorite case the favorite motherboard and i will upgrade it all the way and see what i can do with it so enjoy and hop in for a ride so let's look what do we have here first thing missing that we can spot on it's the grill that the speaker was supposed to mount in uh, we see that the front panel is broken, but that shouldn't be a big problem. We can use some epoxy to glue this together. Uh, front panel is okay, but the first problem is missing button. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have one, but there is another one just like this one, so we can use the technique to recreate this button. We got some bookkeeping markings on this computer, and they tell us a little bit that this computer was used in school, like in the beginning of the 90s, like, hey, I could have used that computer in school. We've got very basic things in here. Power supply looks completely original for this case. We've got basic cards like FDD controller with RS uh, ports, VGA and network, and Varta killer. Yep. That's probably the first cause why this computer is not working. Probably the traces underneath are eaten, but we will inspect that a little bit later. Now, the main star of the show is this Harris 286 16 MHz uh, CPU. Almost the fastest one, 25 was the fastest as far as I uh, remember. But yep, that's a perfectly nice system from the beginning from the 90s it all looks original at this point uh, this is higher end motherboard for 286 it features uh, sim modules for memory not only the deep uh, style uh, memory so very nice board to have uh, then but uh, let's see what else uh, do we have here We've got a one 3.5 uh, floppy drive. Uh, five and a quarter was probably present at some point, but now it's missing. But we will put one. It definitely fits inside of such a case. We have the uh, locking clutch uh, missing, so the cover of this uh, the, of this case will fall down. So we will need to build or buy a latch. Uh, this case is a little bit bent, but that's not too bad. It's also dirty, so I wanted to check how how complicated will it will be to remove all those scuffs and just a little bit IPA and some work, and it should uh, everything should go off. And uh, bigger problem is the paint job on this case. Uh, the metal parts are scuffed here and there. There are some scratches and I am terrible at painting. So I'm not sure what I am going to do with the rest of this case. Plastic parts, I'm not worried about the metal. Mm, we will give it a fair clean and see how it will look a little bit later just some labels here and there nothing to be worried about the smaller scuffs yeah 
this might be might be a problem. But we will see. We will try to restore the case to its uh, full uh, full glory. Little bit of retro brighting for the front panel. Not uh, the color is not that much off, but it was hard to show on camera. There are some yellowish brownish parts on on the plastic uh, front panel, and I would like to have a nice even color all across uh, of those panels. So. Uh, a little bit retro brighting just to make the uh, color more even across the whole uh, whole computer. But overall, it's not a terribly the shape is not that bad, and I really enjoyed this case. I don't know if I've said that enough. So uh, the best thing is to disassemble everything, just to have the bare case. You can take this uh, black front and back panels off also but that wasn't necessary at the moment uh, and the way I am always doing it is just to take it for with my car and give it a clean <laughs> with a jet wash yep uh, it's perfectly great strategy if you are going just to wash the case don't try to wash motherboard uh, if you have extremely dirty motherboard you can use dishwasher um, then we have to look at the power supply before we will try to turn on uh, any retro computer we have to check if the power supply is producing the uh, required voltages uh, 5 and 12 volts uh, I've disassembled the power supply just to take a look everything seems to be looking just fine it looks to be a half bridge configuration very very basic uh, for that time, two big capacitors uh, in the front, 400 volts. We could measure them up a little bit later. One thing that I found was one of the MOSFETs uh, have been uh, replaced with two diodes. I don't know if that's the factory or somebody tried to to repair this power supply. It had a little bit uh, lower voltage than you might anticipate. So both 12 and 5 volts uh, rails were a little bit low when I measured them uh, without any load. So the move with uh, these older power supplies for 286 is always put a little bit load. Uh, on this power supply and then check the voltages. You can use, as I have did, a few hard drives to put enough uh, load and then you will see if uh, that was my basic measurement without any load, so 11 volts, uh, slightly above. Then you connect the uh, hard drives and see if the voltage will go down or up. If it will go down, most probably capacitors or you have other problems here. Here are those two diodes. Not sure if that's factory, but doesn't look like a fresh solder job. Don't know. So I've connected the load to check it up and the voltage went a little bit higher. It's not 12, but it looks uh, fine now. And here we've got suspect number one, Varta. Uh, these batteries are 30 years old and they are spilling their guts over our beautiful 286 motherboard and with this acid that comes out they are most probably in all cases um, breaking uh, breaking those motherboards so the only way is to desolder them to snip them away and to try to find all the broken traces first uh, first things first you got to clean this up nicely with some IPA uh, some people use white vinegar to uh, to neutralize the acid and then use IPA to clean the whole board up I didn't have any vinegar so I've just used IPA second thing is visual visual inspections you can see if the traces are eaten you can see a little bit here but uh, you can use uh, magnifying glass but always the best and the most important part of the job is to use multimeter to find both ends of uh, of the broken trays and uh, they are usually uh, always covered with a solder mask so you can use uh, uh, glass fiber pen or uh, 
something sharp to remove solder mask and then to solder the wire and recreate the trace. I've just used a jumper wire, didn't went uh, through the board. I wanted to see if, uh, if this will start to work immediately. Then I thought I will clean this up. Uh, I also connected a small battery. Uh, that was, it's a bigger voltage battery than 3.6 volt, but uh, it was in storage mode, so it produced, it produced roughly 3.4 volts. At this moment, I connected it because uh, often people say that that kind of board won't boot without battery so I just wanted to check but no uh, I've repaired three traces that were broken and that didn't help so uh, yeah we should look uh, further uh, now my second second place that I always go to are these capacitors You've got usually six, sometimes three, sometimes two capacitors there, depending on the motherboard. They are usually easy to swap, so I've desoldered them, soldered the new ones. Wasn't sure if that was the case, but uh, the computer didn't boot after that. So, next uh, part of checking, just print uh, voltages for ISA. Uh, or you can just go start with the first pin, it's a ground, first on the left it's a ground and then every second should be either 5 or 12 volts and you will, you will know if the board is electrically working, if the voltages are supplied, you will know what's the condition of capacitors, you will know if the traces are fine, you will know a lot of things about this board even if it's not booting so even if you don't have precise schematics for this board, you can always measure the ISO slot to know what's actually going on on this board. Um, so that's the way to try. My board was at this point okay. All traces were fixed. Capacitors were uh, capacitors were replaced. Not all of them, but those that I thought matter and this board still wouldn't put and that's important thing because basically nothing would happen you won't hear a beep anything from this board it was still completely dead so most probably mm, if we are going to assume that whole board it's not the headland chip is not dead or something most probably you've got a bios problem now, understanding the BIOS situation on the AT system uh, takes us to 5170 IBM PC and the design choices that were there. Basically, there are two chips. One of them is marked high or odd and the other one is low or even. These are both 8-bit chips that are supplying a 16-bit uh, system data bus. That is the way every 286 uh, system is configured. So you always have this high and low BIOS chip. Basically there are 8-bit uh, chips. Why? Two separate 8-bit and not one 16-bit. Uh, it's only a guess. Probably it was about the price of one 16-bit uh, uh, chip. I don't know. And these are EEPROMs, that means they can be deleted by UV light, that's why they all have these stickers uh, on top of them. You can program them and for the 286 motherboard it's pretty easy, you take an AMI BIOS and it should be compatible. Uh, so I took those chips and plugged them, installed this, them in this motherboard. I don't have a programmer at the moment uh, on my hand, so I've just took a replacement with uh, AMI uh, BIOS. I assume that motherboard, uh, that the keyboard BIOS located on the left was fine. Added some some SIM modules, and yeah, I was experimenting also with this deep memory because I wanted to understand whether the whole complete board is working or not and what's how the memory situation on this board gonna be at the end uh, I went at the end with just uh, SIM modules because that's 4 megabyte 
which is the maximum memory capacity for as far as I know. Uh, one thing also to notice, there is an external battery connector there. So you could install external battery to keep the settings for uh, BIOS, but this battery should be 6 volt, not 3.6. Uh, I found that in schematics. Probably also something that we've got from the original 5170 that had a 6 volt battery with I'm not sure it's completely that style of header, but yeah, basically that style of header. Uh, but I went the other way, I will show you that shortly. Here you can uh, install a coprocessor, uh, but it would have to be clocked on somewhat 16 megahertz, and it's not that easy to find one with that clock. You could also solder in a crystal and do an asynchronous clock for 286, but I'm not sure how this would work maybe i will maybe i will try to buy one i don't know those that i have found were extremely expensive at 16 megahertz so yep uh i swapped the uh, chips for settings and then i went to solder in the battery my first take was uh, mount the battery externally then i thought well this kind of barrel batteries looks cool on that port but there is a big chance that it will again do the same in the next 10 years, that it will corrode or spill it guts. I hope that these batteries are uh, better quality now, but I'm not sure if you can assume that. So I've decided to put a little bit Captain tape uh, between, so if the battery was to spill its guts, uh, there would be some protection layer there. You could also put a uh, more generous amount of solder mask um, that way uh, that would be the first thing to uh, to get molten down if the battery was uh, was to leak again uh, I went with the captain tape because I thought well it doesn't look all that bad and probably I could get away with just that I don't know how long this system are going to work anyway or how long they are gonna be relevant in the matter that people would like to collect them so i've decided that yep 10 another 10 years and adding that kind of battery would be basically fine soldering that kind of battery is a uh, is not uh, very complicated also sourcing them online is not they are pretty cheap one is like two or three bucks so basically pop that in solder in and you are good to go um, this battery of course uh, allow you to store the settings in the BIOS which is pretty important because if you got anything more than 640k of memory uh, most of these AT boards will only without uh, safe settings will only see the 64 or 768k of memory otherwise you have to go to BIOS configure that so it's a little bit hassle it's good to have a battery again you could connect external one via that kind of connector uh, you could put a six uh, that is that connector is six volts so you could put four double uh, eight batteries in a package uh, one downer with that is I think you will also need a diode uh, because uh, Mm, this header I think also will uh, recharge this battery that battery should be rechargeable and if you are just put uh, three uh, four double uh, eight batteries uh, this board will try to charge them which will eventually break uh, the battery and you have to put diode to prevent the current to flow in the other way but each diode has a voltage drop and since that is requiring 6 volts and diode will give you another 1 volt voltage drop you will have something like 4.8 volts there not sure if that's enough maybe it is um, that's that's i guess it's something you could explore but uh, don't think you can get away just soldering the battery w without the diode uh this battery will get wrecked anytime mm, yeah after sometimes when because uh, this port will try to recharge 
a non-rechargeable uh, battery. That's some one thing to keep in mind. Although uh, I'm not entirely sure how it's uh, done in the sport. Maybe there is a, some kind of diode there. Not entirely sure. Could be measured. Maybe I will check it out and let you know in the second part of restoration of the system. Um, my my small plan to eat a captain tape uh, was a little bit more tricky than I anticipated in the beginning because it went off, but I was able to put it uh, later. And here is, uh, it's from, I shot this before, I've installed uh, the battery, but that was my first attempt to boot the system after I swapped uh, the BIOS chips. Uh, so it's just to show you that, yeah, most probably uh, the single problem, the one problem or the main problem of this board, it was just basically uh, BIOS. Uh, somebody, these this paper stickers on top of that chips, uh, they uh, let uh, a little bit UV light through. Maybe that was uh, the cause, what uh, caused it to lose its memory. And basically this computer had no, didn't know what to do on a boot so that is why no beep no nothing no error code no memory counting nothing happened because this computer didn't have any bios which is yep essential for a for a system like that so uh, i guess that's uh, my uh, main tip uh, for this uh, first part of restoration probably if you get completely dead uh, motherboard and you check uh, everything electrically uh, it's still not working probably try to source a BIOS in that style to 8-bit pins just check the packages for this uh, chips if that's uh, what you can find on eBay uh, no problem you could buy a programmer no problem a lot of AMI BIOS uh, to load and to check you might have some problems with a uh, little bit with uh, drive compatibility but I guess not with this later on uh, 5170 clones because they were all pretty standard, pretty the same. Headland chipset, uh, 89 or 90 BIOS, they all work the same. So it should be good to go just with any BIOS you can go and program it. So here it is, uh, board is run and ticking. I had a little bit problem with clips for this RAM here. I need to glue that with some hot glue because that white plastic is brittle. Yeah, it's very brittle. So as soon as you look at it the wrong way, it will fall off. So a little bit hot glue to secure that. Don't know how I will finish that up, but right now I've got a, yep, almost four megabytes of RAM there, just a 30 pin glory. All the deep memories are, uh, are uh, taken off. Battery is there, new BIOS is there, and all seems to be working just fine for now anyway guys that's it for this episode it has to stop somewhere so i stopping this with uh, yeah with the motherboards working but i have some problems as you saw i've got a problem with fdd controller i've got a little bit of problem with uh, io but the motherboard is up and it's running it has new battery it works uh, it rose from the ashes like phoenix. I'm so excited because I love the AT system. The sounds you get as it first up, boot up, and yeah, it just recognizes and tries to count all the RAM and the insane amount of RAM that we've been able to put in this computer. Uh, I'm really pumped for the second part uh, and all that I, that I could show you. Uh, the restoration will continue, I guess, for one episode, possibly two. Maybe, uh, if there will be some roadblocks, I, I don't have the system uh, all up and running at the moment, so I can tell you, but uh, I really think you will enjoy this, as hopefully as much as I did doing that. And guys, uh, as an encouragement, please leave thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more of uh, that kind of uh, content, and see you again. Bye.